Good morning, neighbor. Let's sing to the Lord this glorious morning because almost 2,000 years ago, he arose from the dead. And one glorious morning, he had defeated death, hell, and the grave for that whomever would believe, they can come and receive. One Friday morning, evil came and tried to steal my hope away. They crucified my precious Lord, left him to die alone in scorn. And though they tried to keep him in the ground, no power could keep my Savior down, and he is alive, hallelujah, and the stone is rolled away, he is alive, he is alive, oh hallelujah, he is alive, hallelujah, and the stone is rolled away, he is alive, he is alive, oh hallelujah. my own cross as well and on the cross he took my shame he bore my sin and freed my name and though they tried to keep him in the ground no power could keep my savior down Alive, hallelujah, and the stone is rolled away. He is alive, he is alive, oh hallelujah. He is alive, hallelujah, and the stone is rolled away. He is alive, he is alive, oh hallelujah. And though they tried to keep him in the no power to keep my Savior down, for he is alive, hallelujah, and the stone is rolled away. He is alive, he is alive, oh hallelujah. He is alive, hallelujah, and the stone is rolled away. He is alive, he is alive, oh and he still is alive so why don't his people rejoice and be thankful every morning he's conquered it all we should really have no fear because fear has torment <coughs> and he defeated all that you know and the devil he wants to bring you fear and he wants to make you doubt and you go through your day. I'm I'm lost. I'm a I'm a loser. I can, I don't have the victory, but the victory is his. We glory in his victory. All we did was give our life over to him and say, "Lord, lead me." It's his, it, and it's all his. He's done it all. And uh, one of the parts that really excites people when you sing that song is though they tried to keep him in the ground. You know, they they even put guards. I mean, they there there was something within them. They knew. This isn't just any ordinary man. You don't have to put a guard, put guards over a, a dead man's tomb. But there, were, there was worry that they would come. You know, you know, some of it are probably natural. You know, they they're going to come and take his body. You know, and say that he raised. But there was something within these people, like Pilate, when he looked at him. He's why did they want to kill him so much? And Pilate saying, "I can find nothing. I don't see what what the big deal is here." Yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, I don't see anything wrong with him. And his own wife is saying, I, I had dreams to stay away from this man. You know, there's something special about him. There's something different. And the Pharisees, they were aware, you know, and, and the Jews, they were aware of the things that Jesus Christ was doing, the blinded eyes and raising people from the dead. So there had to be some kind of inkling. But 
You know, what happens if he comes back from this grave? You know, what what happens then? You know, what's going to happen? You know, and uh, again, there was probably some, you know, there were some thoughts. Uh, if they steal his body, they could lie and say this stuff. But there's something within these people. There's something different about this man. And uh, because when he comes back from the grave, you know, and these soldiers say, this is what happened, you know, pay him off, tell them to shut their mouths. But God was not going to have, leave, he doesn't leave people ignorant. He said, you know, this gospel is going to go around the world. People are going to know. There is no, and you know, you think these guards behind this, you know, guarding this stone. But today, even in these Muslim countries who want to reject Jesus Christ, you know, as a savior and the Messiah and all these things, they want to keep them, keep it shut down. He, God's still getting to them because they're having dreams and they're having visions. and They're saying, who is this Jesus? You know, I've read books about these people, you know, going, I just saw a picture of him. And he was able to, you know, the, living in a Muslim country, you, have, you know, Joe, we don't talk about him, this Jesus. But they said, I, then I, was, I see on the TV and all I ha saw was a picture. These people are paid to have like a, just a, and a painting because we don't actually even know what he actually looks like. But they said, God is able to speak to us even through that because I'm walking through, uh, one person said I was walking through the living room and looked over and someone left a TV channel on. And it was like one of those, you know, like they used to have those test patterns, like, this, this random picture. She said, I just saw a picture. I was like, and immediately I knew this is Jesus. And she said, when I looked at it, it was just a picture of his face. It was not him on the cross. It was just a picture of his face. It was able to reach me. See, when someone's alive, I mean, he's alive, and he's going to get to you if he, whatever way he can, through dream, through a vision, through the Bible, through a song, through, you know, I've heard of people saying, you know, I just heard some Christian people playing music, you know, and Brother Oliveira in the Philippines said, I just heard them, and I thought, man, they're good musicians. I'm going to, maybe they'll let me jam with them for a while. And he said, you know, I wasn't a Christian, but these people opened the door for me, and God was able to use that as a hook. He will reach whomever he can, you know, so no power is going to keep him down. And still today, no power is going to keep him down. If he wants you, he's going to reach you, you know, and our job really is to listen. But this song is a, is a, is a, what we would label a praise song. There's praise and worship. Worship's more, uh, intimate and quiet. Maybe, you know, as you're, as you're worshiping, but praise is just reaching out to him. And I really like in John chapter 20 and verse 19, this is after the resurrection. Then the same day at evening, be, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain, if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And what I like about this, they are the the disciples, these are men just like us, and they're afraid. It says they were assembled together where the the doors were shut. They're in hiding for fear of the Jews, because just as they killed Jesus, they're going to come after us. Remember, Peter denies them and everything when the pressure is really put on them. So these people, they're really experiencing fear. We can sit here in our on our couch and recliners 2,000 years later and say, well, I'll tell you what I'd do. But these were men, they were, they were afraid. You know, what's going to happen? And we have 2,000 years of studying and reading the Bible and really grasping things. These people are living it in real time. So if you put yourself in their position, you kind of, oh, uh, I don't know what I would do. But when Jesus appears to them and he stands in the midst and says, peace be with you. And they, he shows them his hands. He shows them his side. And then it says, then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. You know, they, he takes their fear and turns it into joy and gladness. They can be, they can have peace. Because again, he says, peace to you. You'll be at peace. You know, I have, I have conquered these things, and you can be brave. But then it says, Now Thomas called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. 
And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. So again, the doors are shut, but Thomas is with them now. And again, he's saying, Peace. You know, what a greeting. Peace to you. You know, I'm bringing peace. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. So we can have this peace, not just because, well, I've seen it, but, you know, maybe not in the natural, but in the spiritual, he will show you, he can take you to the cross. And you believe it because it's something within your heart. You know what the price has been paid for you. And you want to obey because uh, I've read about, you know, Thomas with this one instance, he becomes known as Doubting Thomas. You know, when you say Doubting Thomas, oh, yeah, I know who you're talking about. He doubted the Lord or doubted what all the other ones were saying to him. And that's how that's an attitude a lot of times we get when someone says, God has shown me this. Yeah, right. God's not going to show me that. I don't believe that until God shows me. But And you want to know that it comes from the Lord, but help us to love and trust one another. And, but what I really appreciate, when I read some of the church history, they said, and this was someone kind of filling in the gap, so you can take this how it is, but when I was reading it, they said, you know, when you read church history, the Bible and church history, you'll read about a lot of the disciples coming back to Jerusalem at times. But they said, you know what, nowhere in can you read that Thomas did. It's not saying he didn't, that Thomas ever came back. They said it's almost as if once his doubts were relieved, Thomas went and discipled and, and missioned and all these things. And he ended up giving his life, just like many of the most, more than most of the other than John, all the rest have to give their lives for the gospel. And Thomas does as well. He does not back down. They said it's almost as if this instant, Thomas said, I will no longer doubt. And when you think about it, how the Lord looks at him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. He said it's almost as if something just completely changed in Thomas and he became bold and he was no longer doubting Thomas. You know, even though through history he's known as that, he said he never backed down again. He never came back. He was on the road for the Lord till he gave his life. I think they said around India or somewhere like that. I, I could be wrong about that, that he gives his life. So, Lord, you're alive because you're living through me. You know, you resurrected, but then you went away and said, you know, I'll be with you always. He's always with us. So God bless you all today in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.